Florida atheist petitions schools to ban the Bible. Okay. This is such a, this is so great. Okay. In a letter dated April 19th, Chaz Stevens, an artist and Florida's resident political stunt activist, requested that Miami-Dade County Public Schools and Broward County Public Schools ban the Bible. According to Penn America, Florida has the third largest number of banned books, most of which touch on race, sexuality, sexual orientation, and gender identity. In his letter to Jose Dortez, uh, Miami-Dade uh, Miami County Public School Superintendent, Stevens eloquently described the, that the Bible contains, quote, age inappropriateness, social emotional learning, mentions of bestiality, and RAPE. I can't say the full word because of YouTube. Stevens stated, quote, <laughs> As is often the case with banned books, I ask your agency to lay flame to that giant stack of fiction in a pyre worthy of a Viking send-off. <laughs> okay. He also challenged the appropriateness of teaching the Bible's position on slavery, stating that if white students, quote, read such passages, they may wake up to civilization's sordid past, and that this would be too woke for a state so preoccupied for critical race theory. Stevens commented that, quote, the government can't pick and choose religion, but they can choose which books they review for banning and which ones they don't. So wait, there's there's so much about this story that is freaking hilarious. Okay, first of all, I found the letter that he wrote to these schools and we can go over it together. Um, but I wanna give a little bit of context. So for those who don't know, in Florida and in many Southern or deeply evangelical states in the United States, there's been a huge culture war going on over banning books and banning books from schools because they are infested with the woke indoctrination of critical race theory. And you're trying to, like, it also has to do with this rhetoric of teaching kids that LGBT people exist is grooming them. And um, a lot of really hate, I personally, that grooming rhetoric, like, is, I can't explain to you, like, what it makes me feel. I, it is so, like, hateful. Um, and that's not something that I just throw around, right? Um, anyway, so there's been a huge spree, just a free for all of banning books, anything that mentions that, hey, there's a trans kid. Hey, this person maybe has a crush on a boy and he's a boy. Like anything like that. Or even children's books about like two penguins, two gay penguins that raised a baby penguin together. Um, you know, banned, you're, you're grooming children. Um, so this, that's the greater context. And when Chaz Steven learned that there was a motion to ban something like 18 um, math books, arithmetic books from Florida, he was like, this is too much. Like I'm, 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 I have to, I have to fight back. And this was his way of fighting back. Um, I wait, let me pull up the letter that he wrote because it is so funny. Okay. So here is the letter. Oops. Okay. Here we go. So in it, um, he talks about, he, he gives reasons why the Bible should be banned. He gives seven reasons and gives citations of different biblical verses as his proof. Okay. <laughs> and so it starts off with, Dear Dr. Dortez, Good day to you. I hope these words find you well. As you well know, Governor Ron DeSantis signed House Bill 14. 67, which requires school districts to give parents a say in the selection of instructional materials, including library books and textbooks. With that in mind, I wish to file such an objection, requesting the Miami-Dade County Public School System immediately remove the Bible from the classroom, the library, and any instructional material. Additionally, I also seek the banishment of any book that references the Bible. And as often the case with banned books, I ask your agency to lay flame to that giant stack of fiction in a pyre worthy of a Viking send off. Um, and so he talks about age appropriateness. Do we really want to teach our youth about drunken orgies and references Matthew chapter 17, verse 19? 
yeah, bestiality, wokeness. This is what that's so funny. With the constant yeah, beast... Go what, ahead. give the read the example for bestiality. The the Bible verse. <laughs> Taking a cue from Florida statute eight four seven dot zero zero one six a b and c one should consider such discussions to be harmful to minors and obscene quote do not have sexual relations with an animal and defile yourself with it a woman must not present herself to an animal to have sexual relations with it that is a perversion leviticus 18 23. yeah so even though i say don't do it like the fact that the bible is talking about the, a, a woman exposing herself to an animal for sexual relationship the fact that that's in the bible that makes the bible um not appropriate for children yeah and yeah. then this is this is one of my favorite wokeness with the constant babbling crossed out with the constant concerns <laughs> <laughs> about teaching critical race theory. Should we not take stock of the Bible's position on slavery? I'm concerned that our young white students will research a passage and wake up to civilization's sordid past. Um, and then social emotional learning with the most so trouble. That, that, that part is like pretending like he's anti, like an anti woke, using anti woke language. Yeah, but yeah, but go ahead. Yeah. With social emotional learning, the most troubling issues for many, it's as it's obvious, we <laughs> it's obvious once we teach little Jimmy and Susie to show empathy for their classmates, they're one giant step closer to get their LGBTQ plus freak on. <laughs> <laughs> like, like wow. Just, hey, YouTube, just, we're not saying YouTube, we're not saying any of this, by the way. So Yeah, this is this is all satire. Basically mm -hmm. saying, oh, you know, but teaching children to have empathy for other LGBT kids is one step closer to just promoting it. Um, and then intimation, please accept this document as my request to remove the Bible and any referential material from the Miami-Dade County Public Schools. In the end, if Jimmy and Susie are curious about it can do what everyone else does get a room at the hotel six and grab the gideons so this is a reference to if you go into any hotel or motel in the united states you will find something called the gideon bible which is this biblical tract where they will put new testaments for free in every single hotel around the freaking country so he's saying if they're curious they can go to a hotel and find the bible there um and uh if yeah and my very best to you and thank you for taking care of our kids bishop chaz stevens ordained in florida california florida and jazeera county mars first church of mars <laughs> so he's a bishop of the first church of mars um yeah this made me laugh my ass off today all right so First of all, somebody somebody in the live chat is saying, it's funny when Armin talks to YouTube, LOL, it's all automated. Okay, so you don't understand. The strike could be automated, okay? But then when you appeal, if I have a clarification right around the part where the strike is about, then when I'm writing the notes to the human who's reviewing the appeal that like i can say look i just i even clarified that this was satire right so that's for the that's not for the algorithm where i say that that's i put that in there for the appeal process okay so that's how it works um also okay so forever stormy saying are there bibles in public school libraries in florida yeah i mean they have bibles right do they I mean, I mean it, it's likely to be in any library as much as any yeah. other book. Okay, so like you can get other religious texts, but from the it, Bible there too, shouldn't be I like mean, that. The should, I mean, shouldn't that be? Isn't that already illegal? I mean, I'm I'm pretty it's already illegal in Canada. Isn't that illegal in the U.S. to have like in public to have Bibles in public schools? I think it's. I have no idea technically I mean, or legally what the thing is, but I'm just saying like just having it as a material that's available for students to check out of the library should they want to, that doesn't seem oh. like a violation of anything versus like I mean, having it featured in the classroom and this is what we study and teaching it as this is legitimate and this is authoritative, oh, that's okay. not allowed, but just having it available as a material right, 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 right. to voluntarily okay. check out, that doesn't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Right, you're right. Um, but th these other books that are banned for all these reasons, like the ones that you mentioned with the two penguins, two gay penguins or whatever, 
when they get banned, they get banned as an educational material in class, but you can still have it in a library, right? Probably. Um, this whole book banning thing, there's a lot of variability from state oh, okay. to state, school to school, county to county. Um, so sometimes it's like it's not allowed in the school at all. Sometimes it's as a teaching material. Sometimes mm. like they want to shut down the whole freaking library. Like no, not even exaggeration. Mm. Um, right. So so I mean, I like. I don't understand how could anybody deny that if this this standard whatever any book like that if it's being banned then the Bible if you want to be consistent the Bible should be banned right so if you have two gay penguins two male penguins raising an egg, an egg together in a children's story or whatever as a way to educate people about LGBT stuff and I mean by the way two male penguins do sometimes raise an egg together like I think that happens actually. I oh no! This is it. observable in nature. Like this is a yeah, real yeah. thing. Penguins. Yeah. Okay. Be gay. <laughs> so that's a, that. That's. I mean. I mean. I'm not sure if they're gay or not. I'm. I'm sure I've seen other animals are gay, but sometimes two male penguins, even if they're not gay, they they just decide to raise an egg together, right? But I mean, that's a cute I mean, way. How wholesome. That's very cute. You know, like that's a very cute way to introduce children to this to the to different ways of you know building a family, right? Um, it's a great opportunity to use that as an excuse, right? But if you, if you think that's like grooming and should be banned, okay, anybody who thinks that, there's no way that you cannot, you, with that, you know, lot, with that way of thinking, you if you want to be consistent, you shouldn't be banning the Bible. I mean, the Bible literally has two daughters uh, having sex, sex with their father, without his consent using alcohol as a way to get him drunk um and they then, meet to yeah, their own dad yeah they meet to their own dad and the bible doesn't condemn it the bible doesn't the, the bible doesn't say that that was a bad thing or any, in fact the bible turned their mother into a pillar of salt simply for looking back right but the daughters who got their father drunk so that they could get pregnant off of him. That was apparently a okay because they didn't get any punishment. And that's in the Bible. Priorities. Um, so, yeah, I know. So, like, if that's in the, so you should, anybody who thinks that those penguins, children shouldn't be exposed to those penguins, then they should also think that the children shouldn't be exposed to the story at all, mm -hmm. which means that the Bible should be taken away from children. Like, these, how, what would be the logical reason like what would any christian with that line of reasoning think that the bible is a book that children should have access to like is there any argument for this that i haven't heard of because i haven't heard of anything you have you heard, like you're the next you're an ex-christian have you ever heard a, a, a christian explaining to you why like that is too juicy like stories like this is too like too princess like two princess kissing is too explicit for children but the bible isn't have you ever heard an argument for this no a lot of christians don't even know that that exists like a lot of christians legitimately do not know that there is rape in the bible like they don't know that like it's like unheard of to them um and it's when i've been in faith-based situations like there aren't really discussions of these passages it's more passages that talk about and promote one's relationship to god and felt spiritual experience um and not these other stories but oh murtad murtad skeptic oh, i can't talk murtad skeptic is saying let's not forget he offered up his daughters to be uh r-worded in order to seem kind to the guest angels who obviously could already defend themselves yes that also happened um yeah and also family values bengali hindu is also making a point here saying jesus asked his followers to reject his to, to reject their family um and hate their family yeah so you as well like i mean if this was in any other book like remember the part of the bible that says like if you i no jesus the the new testament says that jesus says i come here to turn a mother against a daughter a father against their son blah 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 all of that's you know yeah, this yeah, would yeah. be like if this was in any other book, people were like, oh, family values. This is an attack on families, right? No, I they mean, that is exactly the rhetoric used by authoritative destructive cults. 
Right, I know, but like, how how could you think like your side of on the side of family values when the book that you value the most is saying specifically that the mission of this book is to turn the families on each other in favor of Jesus? Jesus specifically says that if you love your family more than me, then you're not with me. I've and... I've seen some like real loop de doo justifications of this where they're like no they don't mean it literally they don't mean it oh, of literally course. of course of course of course, <laughs> of course. well we don't <laughs> well the pa okay no, well and it could never mind wait there are Anything a few more there's a few well. more juicy juicy segments that i want to read from an interview this guy did the 57 year old florida man says his ire was stoked after florida lawmakers decided this month to ban 54 math books they were claimed to have incorporated topics such as critical race theory. And then he said, I love the algebras, said Stephen. <laughs> I love the algebras, says Stephen, who studied applied mathematics in, in college. And those Tallahassee loons just banned a bunch of arithmetic books. Stephen sent the petitions as a way to point out the hypocrisy. He said, if you want to teach morality and ethics, do you really want to turn to a book that wants you to dash babies against rocks? Yes. Um, it has a... And uh, so he actually, I, there's a final note I want to make. It's, it's um, wait, where was it? Stephen said he is particularly interested in drawing attention to the hypocrisy. I don't have the votes, he said. My job is merely to turn the hypocrisy on itself and let the bureaucrats eat each other for lunch. So saying he has knowledge, he has proof that the government officials in the schools have received this letter and there's like, now this has to be dealt with by them in some way. They have to deal with it. And... Um, He's actually been a very, a very, very successful atheist and secular activist in the past. Um, in 2015, he petitioned 11 South Florida municipalities to either drop the prayer that opens their city commission meetings or let him lead a prayer in the name of Satan. After Stephen's request, some Florida cities ended up dropping their moment of prayer altogether. <laughs> he said, the satanic stare withered them down. <laughs> That's pretty um, good. And but this anyway, guy just even it. he even erected a festivist pole in the Capitol building when the Capitol building was having a Christmas display. He did a festivist pole from this the movie the show Seinfeld and had an airing of grievances, <laughs> which is my favorite. So next to this official, you know, very nice Christmas display, there's a metal pole built out of beer cans that the state has to keep there. For secularism. <laughs> For secularism. Um, the by the way, I like grievances how... made me laugh so hard. We just got a donation, and Ras I like how Rasam notifies the emojis that Rasam not uses to notify us that we got a donation. Uh, thank you, Rasam, for letting oh, us Bobo. know. Bobo donated Bobo. five dollars. Thank you so much. Thank Bobo. you, Bobo. Thank you. This is guys. This is a good way to remind to. Uh, because the donations are not like super chats, we don't see it on um, Streamyard. So this is actually a good way to let us know. Thank you, Gus. And that's a clever way to for for to make sure that we notice it and be thank uh, yeah, the, don like the donors. Ring the bell. Uh, ring the bell. <laughs> yeah. Also, yeah. Secular rarity is pointing to the part of Bible where ha where it talks about um, men coming like donkeys. You know, yes, having yes. having emissions like donkeys, right? So again, not appropriate for children. Not at all appropriate for children. Yeah, yeah. that whole passage is wild. It's about whores. <laughs> yeah, whores. It it is it is describing um, you know, length of penises and the strength of orgasms. That's that's part of the Bible. Like, why but would that be? But it's all an be... allegory. That passage yeah, but, actually is an allegory. It's I know it's an allegory, but it's forced. still not appropriate for children. It's still not appropriate for children. Like it's an allegory that should, children shouldn't be exposed to, obviously. So it's like I can't, you know, I think you should be honest as a Christian, even if you think the Christian Bible is teaching you good values. You, you have to be honest. Even from a Christian perspective, it's not appropriate for children. The book itself is not appropriate for children. Maybe it's a, I don't agree with this, but as a Christian, you should say like, oh, it's a good, it has good moral lessons, but maybe after 
you're an adult. Like, <laughs> until you're, a, yeah, I don't know. Um, oh, Bobak is oh, here. Who's Steepy Man? Dorun. Holy <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, if you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest Blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.